Damn, so this is my white privilege. Rule number one of post-Soviet countries. Everyone is poor, except the people who own a stake in Gazprom or sell crocodile. Get with the times, young man. Rule number two of post-Soviet countries. Do not go to the anti-corrupt government protest. Why not? This is a democracy? <laughs> around and find out and finally rule number three people are extremely nice to each other because you guys are all in this shit together i grew up in the poorest part of the city in one of the poorest countries on the whole continent watching the surroundings get richer and safer by the day as of now georgia got so rich we even got a white people immigrating here for a better life which is an accomplishment any country can only dream of. But there are just like pros and cons of living in a post-Soviet country like this. Work life is horrible. It is practically impossible to buy anything unless you have an extremely good job or a business that you own. You cannot be average. I am lucky enough to have you guys by my side buying my merch, wink, at cartley.shop and viewing my videos. For a long ass time here, the only reasonable paying job that a person could get was scamming Americans or Europeans out of their money through call centers. Their prime targets being lonely Scandinavian grandmas. Thankfully, I've never worked in one of those jobs. I worked in another call center as a customer support in America. And I used to work around 7 to 9 hours a day, sometimes 10 to 12 hours a day, night shift, and get paid less than $500 a month. And this money was considered good by the way. At that point I was probably making more than my dad to be honest. You know what the craziest thing also is? You get penalized for not being an entrepreneur and having a normal job. When I used to work in that call center, I used to pay 20% tax on my little $500 of income, which is just a fixed tax, which is already like not good, it's 500 fucking dollars. However, Georgia has a thing where if you're an individual entrepreneur, you only pay 1% tax, which is what I do now, which is fucking insane. The business taxes here have literally turned this place into a tax haven. And so, a lot of people are coming here for the cheap living cost and the insanely good tax, which is fair, I respect it. Or to escape Russia, but we'll talk about that later. Business is good. But there aren't a lot of things people are willing to spend money on, especially when money is more rare if you get what I'm saying. Like most people would not do white people stuff as I like to call it, such as go bowling and pay like $20 to do so. So it's hard to run a business here within just purely Georgian customers, mostly because of the fucking job situation that I said previously. If a man makes $500 a month, it is extremely hard to get him to spend money for some stuff he doesn't need. And there are just a lot of dumb businesses that are successful in first world countries that would not be successful in like second or third world, which is Stuff that like society doesn't really need, such as handmade necklaces or your mixtapes. I'm sure the biggest rapper in all of Georgia has only sold one mixtape in his life and he only makes money through sponsors and concerts. So to be honest, most people here spend their money on food, rent, utilities and clothes. So like normal stuff, nothing bougie and maybe concerts or clubbing. And because of that, it's very hard to build a million dollar business with only Georgian customers because the country also ha only has like 3.5 million people. It's a little easier to build these businesses in countries with higher populations such as Ukraine or Belarus, but those countries are poor as fuck as well. So yeah, you just have to like throw shit at the wall. If I wanted to do business here, I'd register as an individual entrepreneur, get 1% tax and make my money online as I do now, wink, because when you make money online, first of all, you get paid in dollars and you don't have to deal with your local USSR currency, such as like the Armenian drum, which is legit a fictional currency. When I was in Armenia, I could not fucking believe my eyes. It was like 20,000 bill Armenian drum bills, which is done purposely. So foreigners do not know how much money they're spending and just fucking spend a lot of money when they're there. I don't know. At least that's my theory. So yeah, getting paid in dollars is always better or British pounds or any like big currency, you know, or euros. Yeah, it makes everything way easier to like categorize. But... All this comes in useful because everything is extremely cheap here. You will be able to pay rent, utilities and be well for around $700 a month here 
and that's only because I included $400 of rent. And this has only recently been raised because rent used to be around $200 to $300 here for a very good apartment. This was raised by the massive influx of Russians coming to Georgia to escape their government. So I think around 100,000 Russians came here during March, settling in mostly the capital city of Tbilisi or the coastal city of Batumi. And now that Russia had announced the mobilization, all the plane tickets to Georgia are sold out or go for like 6,000 fucking dollars. It's a four hour fucking flight and there is an insane line at the Georgia-Russia border of Russia is just trying to escape. This has led to me and my friends fucking around that the average Georgian citizen in two weeks will look like this. So these are just the current rent prices, but it will probably go up after this influx as well. How much though? I don't know. So if you make online money and get paid in dollars or British pounds, you are fucking balling here because the exchange rate is so good. Traveling here is also very cheap for foreign citizens. A pack of red Marlboros costs around $2.5. Taxi for like 10 kilometers costs around $3. Khachapuri costs $5 at a restaurant, aka the best food of all time. Wanking Ali costs 40 cents at a restaurant, also the best food of all time. One 2 liter bottle of coca cola costs around 1.2 dollars and my shirts which are very high quality and drippy cost 19 and 25 dollars they're fully cotton which means they're extremely high quality and the best part you can no wear it while being an undercover superhero you can wear it while cheating on your wife with a guy because you're too afraid to come out the closet you can wear it in Atlanta and confuse people by making them think there's a hidden city in the state of Georgia. Hitchhiking in New York City? No problem. There's a 99% chance the truck driver that's going to stop for you is Georgian and upon seeing your shirt he'll think you're cool and not murder you. It can literally save your life. Go to cartil.shop to get these shirts. You know what the vibe of the people here is? We all know how much of a shithole we are in and it's like funny at this point and you can really relate to people. You put me and some fucking random Polish guy next to each other and our childhood is probably the same. This is insane. But this is insane because I used to watch No Fuckers as a kid, right? And he grew up in Chelyabinsk, which is like not the most bougie place in Russia. I grew up in my hood which is definitely not the most bougie place here. Then, me and no fuckers were showing each other where we grew up and it looked exactly the same. It was both a four story tall Khrushchevka. Comic blocks are usually shit, but it also comes in classes. Best comic blocks are in Berlin. Then there are the normal comic blocks. Then the unpainted concrete comic blocks. And then there are the Khrushchevkas. So there is kind of a unity in people struggling, you know? If I meet someone from Eastern Europe, I know they didn't have an easy childhood unless their dad owns like a percentage of Gazprom or some shit, which is exceptionally rare. Other than that, the people are extremely nice, extremely religious as well. Armenia, Georgia and Ukraine are one of the most Christian countries in the world. So people being that traditional leads to Eastern Europe being the number two contender for being the most homophobic place in the world, only being beaten out by the Middle East. Also, for a while, all of Eastern Europe just used to be basically run by the Mafia, but I think that's over now. Also, there's a stereotype that Eastern Europeans are notorious alcoholics, which is completely 100% true. I'm pretty sure that every single person I've met and every single friend I've had struggled with an alcohol problem. Every single male I've met, except my dad, has been a notorious alcoholic at one time in their lives. The profound alcohol use is because of a few reasons. Reason number one, life sucks. As I said, if you haven't got your money situation figured out here and if you're broke, life pretty much sucks because that's just the way everything is when you don't have money. And a lot of people here don't know how to make money so they end up turning to the drink instead of making their money big. As the famous politician, Mikhail Saakashvili once said, better to come in the sink than sink in the cum. But Gatsu, if they don't have money, 
then how do they afford alcohol? Reason number two is that there's a huge culture of alcohol in all of Eastern Europe and you can get alcohol anywhere. Georgia is notorious for inventing wine. Yes, yes, guys, thank you, thank you. And literally, every single family here makes their own homemade alcohol, which includes wine, vodka, and cha-cha, which is like vodka, but way stronger. Homemade vodkas going up to 70 to 90% alcohol. So yeah, that's the reason uh, Lithuanians need to stop drinking. Eastern European cities are a mix of extremely cool, kind of bohemian, kind of villagey houses and vibes. And then there's just gray commie blocks. Just this happy fairy land. And then there's just depression. And then there's just huge Dubai skyscrapers. A lot of the time funded by investors from the UAE. So you'll just see this bullshit mix of every single aesthetic you can imagine. Big skyscrapers, here. Nice village vibes, boom. Depression, boom. Poverty, boom. Rich suburban houses, boom. The cities are beautiful, sometimes clean and sometimes not. But what you'll notice, especially as a Westerner, is that cities are extremely walkable and you don't really need a car to commute most of the time. This is because of the extremely good public transport available everywhere. As Einstein said though, everything is relative. So the public transport is extremely good relative to America or Canada, but not to the Netherlands. You can definitely get around everywhere without a car unless you're going to bumfuck nowhere and even then there's most likely a minibus that's willing to take you there. The cities in the daytime are very relaxing and vibey but at night the demons wake up inside people and just start drinking, drugs, clubs, the Czech going to glory holes, the Polish get homophobic, and Romanians see Andrew Tate. And for this section, let me just start off by saying Putin is a cuck, okay? Drafting kids because he can't win a war in a country that will probably not even exist in the next 10 to 20 years. Russia's population is declining. The fertility rate is ass. I got no clue how Russian men could have these bad Russian girls around. And instead of going up and talking to them, they spend their time playing CSGO, drinking and being racist on YouTube. Ivan, you need to get some hosey on your dick, bruh. Post-Soviet countries have infamously always been at war since 91. Other Eastern European countries have also been at war since 91. But they seem to have relaxed for the most part. Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Russia, Ukraine, Russia, Dagestan, Russia, Chechnya, Russia. Basically everything involving the funny country and also, of course, the Balkans. If every Balkan country was like Slovenia or Czechia, I think everything would be a lot better. The thing is, all this war creates so much racism and tension around people it's each other. Literally, nobody gets together to try and understand each other. Oh, you're not Albanian? Fuck you. And because Georgia has been at war with Russia four times in the past thir fucking 33 years, people fucking hate Russians here. You see graffitis on the street like, no Russian is welcome, good or bad. And this racism is sometimes justified to be honest. Most of the Russians coming here are very very cool. They're all pro-Ukraine and are escaping from the fascist regime of Russia. Some of them I've met such as Zack the Russian shits more on Russia than me. And I've had war with them. <laughs> so, never judge someone by their ethnicity, right? But it has been a few times after the mass Russian immigration here where some of them were just Z. There was also this one time a girl came up to me in a club and we started talking. We were talking, she said she was from Moscow and I jokingly asked her if she was Z. And she said yes. <laughs> Woman, what do you mean your Z? Open up Google Maps, bro. See you turn your location on and see where you are. What, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> there are two types of governments in Eastern Europe or just post-Soviet countries. Ones that dick ride Russia and are basically installed by the FSB or the ones that don't. Trust me. 
you'll barely find any non-corrupt governments here. But there are governments that don't suck Russia's dick. But they still, they're still corrupt. I went to Armenia, which is one of the poorest countries in the world. And all I saw was Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces, Teslas, and Bentleys. I saw a Lamborghini Aventador, which costs over a million dollars on the streets of Yerevan, in a country where the average person earns $4,200 a year. Hmm, how could he buy an Aventador of four grand a year? I wonder. Talking to the locals, they told me, yeah, just motherfuckers just commit tax fraud, motherfuckers are corrupt, and it's oligarch money. And I thought, oh, okay, that makes sense. One guy told me that while there were people literally starving in the streets of Yerevan, the motherfuckers were driving Rolls Royces on the same streets. A lot of these countries are also very violent against protesters, such as Russia, Belarus. Crime system isn't that good. If you're in court, there's a high probability you're fucked and guilty. But same goes for Japan and shit, so I guess we're cool. All in all, if you come from a western country and you want to immigrate to East Europe, just don't. The thing is, every day there is too much of a likelihood of waking up and being told that you have to kill the Russians now. Maybe I'm just biased, because in the last 35 years, Georgia's been invaded by Russia four times, and even ignoring the funny country, the Balkans exist, and personally, God knows when they decide to go to war with each other. All it takes for a Balkan war to break out is like three Serbian nationalists or one Greek with big dreams. So yeah, I don't think it takes a fucking genius to say that moving from Norway to Moldova would not be a wise decision. Sure, I hate paying taxes as well, but you do get what you pay for. But living here is actually very good if you have the money situation handled. Eastern Europe and post-Soviet countries are extremely safe, the people are friendly, taxes are relatively low, everything is way cheaper, there's public transport, but you might have to go to war. So you just wait all out, you know? Also my address goes out to the governments of the USA, Canada, Scandinavian countries and Western Europe. You motherfuckers better have my back if another fucking war with Russia starts or I'm talking shit on YouTube about all you motherfuckers while throwing molotovs out my window. Except Germany. I still remember the whole country of Germany striking down my video with like 200,000 views. But for now, I'll be relaxing, getting a full meal for $4 and enjoying beautiful cities. Buy my shirts. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting me and everyone who's buying my shirts. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.